Here hex 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 hex. 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 Good deal, guys. So um, we were talking about uh, with Darash, we were talking about like, – I just lost my throat. Sorry, guys. Oh, it was like, <laughs> it was like 20 – we were talking about 2021. Um, oh, we're talking about like the EES. Like when, when the EES that uh, we were doing in late uh, or, or mid-2021, like some of those I had set them up in like 12 and 18 months. So I noticed um, – because at one point, I remember that we were talking, Rush, that doing the EES and then extending it still wouldn't get you more. And I agree with that. If I had done them really, really early and still and done Quattro Cinco or at least more than the three six, um, the three six four one, the ten years. But my screw up was, I did them way too early. You know, I just did them for three hundred something days. So ending them over 60, 70% gave me back the principal, gave me back a little bit of the bonus. And then I went Quattro Cinco, uh, maybe like August, September, when we had that dip. And, and then I locked them. So I, I agree that it wouldn't have been a good idea if I, let's say if I had, you know, ended one that was like 12 months and then done it for like probably like another 12 months you know, or something dumb like that. But it's just, I did him so short. Like, like my screw up was at the start. And I feel that since I didn't lose any principal and I still took advantage of the BPD because I locked them in like August or September of 20, uh, 2020. So it was maybe like two months. Um, those are, are still doing like 90% right now. And Yeah, they're good stakes. Mm -hmm. yeah, the only yeah, problem yeah. though is what, what you guys said you know it's like what once then because you know that when we did that we were still under one penny right we were at like three zeros yeah. or whatever we were two zeros you know like middle of september and august there was a lot of fud still there was a lot of confusion oh, yeah. we kept expecting all these influencers to come back and be like all right guys it's been six months richard hasn't rugged the always still there what's going on when are you guys coming over and now it's like four years of us waiting yeah. um so yeah that i guess that's why like i think that at one point you had like issues with the uh, with your phone or something Josh, and we didn't finish that conversation but uh it was, uh, yeah, it, it was something I had, I did at the moment, and I thought it was a great idea because I thought, all right, well, we're at three zeros. It might take us another two or three years to get to a penny and something like that. And then, of course, September 21 happens, and then we get all that FOMO from everyone going in from Paul's, uh, going for Paul's. Um, and yeah. then, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was locked. fucking, I yep. was staked, staked to the hilt back then. So I was like, uh, my, my hands were absolutely tied by myself which is which is the reason why i'm still staked <clears throat> oh exactly exactly like i yeah. I, I hope that i wasn't so, like sounding so, like i was complaining no 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 <laughs> I, I i i was thinking that why because like i was involved in all the chats and and stuff from the beginning and i've been uh, remembering that why why didn't i do that you know early staking and restaking shit and then i realized that it, i already like on day one started building my ladder and i was building it from like quattro cinco's down 
Nice. Which is why I, I, I didn't have to do the, the restaking thing. I, I would probably, if, if I could like turn back time, like like share, I, I would probably not do the short stakes at all and, and start by exactly. doing a year five or something and just skip this first fucking four years of crap. I, I would much rather have done something more productive than just, you know, wait for three years for for the next bump. So I'm I'm going for longer stakes in in, in the future. I'm not like I'm not ending staking. I'm just fucking I'm staking longer and I'm I'm thinking like two cycles ahead or something. But that's now that's awesome. Now let's be aware that we have, even though people don't really like them, there are protocols built on top of Hex which uh, allow liquid staking and uh, kind of uh, pool stakes. So I do have uh, some investment in those. Uh, but yeah, and they make yeah, perfect yeah. sense <clears throat> if. if if you have a long-term uh, perspective on on staking those pooled stakes in particular when they're on on like a discount of course they make sense they make yeah, perfect so, sense yeah uh, just getting more t-shirts there isn't <clears throat> there is like we've completely lost people talking about t-shirts i don't know if it's uh if it's uh, sami i don't think it's him uh but but most of the hexagons have t uh, just stopped talking about it and uh fucking update i can't believe it oh your oh, computer's like coming after you for... yeah it's co they're coming after me again man i don't know i may have to restart oh, and, and join in but yeah, staking is something that we need to bring to the foreground again more. Like there's so much more bullshit going Agreed. on, uh, and and you know it's it's the only thing that's kept me sane in in all this crap is the fact that I know that I'm still good to go for 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 on average uh, twelve point four eight years still. Yeah. And nice. yes, and it staking has also saved me from being able to sacrifice to a lot of projects. So Absolutely. I feel like Jomo, do you know Jomo? Uh, uh, yeah, joy of missing yeah. out. So, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm so glad I didn't, I didn't sacrifice into any of the non RH things, like none of them. I was like, a fucking, yeah, I like that call, oh. Josh. Uh, it, <laughs> Joy the, of missing out. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> on that one, I but, learned in 2020. Yeah, Drash. No, I was saying, like, first, we need to change our language as well. I, theoretically, it's not called staking anymore. It's called mining, hex mining. I, I, <laughs> and, you know, it was in 2019. I had a that uh, while Bitcoin Hex was in its formation, like I was talking about, yeah, mm -hmm. let's not because I was trying to translate the uh, like the website for uh, uh, Hex into Hindi. So staking, nice. it's it's uh, the there is no actual tr tr uh, translation equivalent translation word. So the closest thing would be Dao Lagana, which is like betting. So I was trying to explain to Richard, like, what, if you're calling it a time deposit, like, or a certificate of deposit, why not call it depositing instead of staking? Uh, like, it's staking is more akin to gambling. But, you know, gotcha. all, all these things don't really matter. It's about rhetorics and narratives. And at that time, like Ethereum 2.0 was just starting to make the buzz. So staking was all kind of, that's why we were calling it staking. 
but then yeah i i guess one of his brilliant uh, legal apprentices must have uh, informed him to not use the word staking and we changed it to mining so mm-hmm. it's mining uh, yeah but, maybe back then it was them tr- uh, trying to avoid the whole deposit because to to try to get it as far as possible from securities you know so like getting away from like deposits and dividend payouts and that type of stuff that type of wording which now we're seeing that it kind of did it matter because we're, we're we're noticing um in the documents that uh richard shared yesterday that the sec has not gone through the code this is something that we had discussed a couple of weeks ago. Were they going to get to an audit firm? Were they going to, you know, were they going to check the code and see what Hex does? Meaning it mints, the the coins disappear, then you go back, you mint them. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. they, they're not checking that. They're just they, based they, on they what just, they're answering him. Uh, yeah, Finn. Yeah, yeah they, it sounds like they just believed what somebody told them. And then, yep. like, came up with the rest, just pu- straight pulled it out of their ass. Yeah, that was disappointing, though, because you you figure that if he took so much uh, consideration when designing the product through 2019, specifically, because <laughs> Daraj just mentioned the key. It's like when we were waiting in the middle of 2018 for Bitcoin Hex, it doesn't launch for a year and a half, you know, till December. And us that were here, we remember how much he was taking care of the audits, the financial audits, the the mathematical audit. I mean, it was all kinds of stuff that I remember back then. It was unheard of. Like, that was something that I really, really liked about the the first time. Yeah. Exactly. I never heard about that stuff. Like, now it seems like everybody's talking about audits now. Yeah, exactly. Back then, it was unheard of. I was like, wait, what? You're going to do an audit on this thing? I was like, I'll wait three months for it. Sure. Like, I remember he started mentioning it probably like spring of 2020, you know, when it was, uh, sorry, spring of 2019, you know, because he was already saying, yeah, sure, the the code might be ready in two or three months since late 2018. Yeah, and and people in the chat didn't get it. They were like, well, "Dude, just launch the fucking thing, and yeah. then you can, yeah, yeah, you can just change the code after." And he's like, "Motherfuckers, don't you understand? Unstoppable code. It's unfucking stoppable. Yeah, that was once it's, of, back once then. it's out there, it's out there." The, and everybody's like, "No, dude, I wanna fucking uh, like, I, I wanna get pay it, bro." <laughs> I want to get my shit coinery on. Let me, let me. There was no sacrifice too. Remember, remember that there was like the little FOMO in our chats, but we hadn't put any money. We hadn't done anything. The only effort we had done was just listening to our H uh, streams and all that. So that was, uh, that was was way different than the Paul's one. Yeah. I was getting my pennies in line. Just fucking hoping not to be as broke as I was. Here, here. I'm just surprised the SEC didn't ask uh, uh, in their letter that does hex c- connect to the uh, Wi-Fi router? Like, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's that yeah. that kind of stuff, man. Like, and you know, it it's stupid. it makes me feel like this is like. Uh, uh, you know, a targeted attack. Um, people like we. I know for sure some mm. influencers were paid to talk negatively about uh, uh, hex. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, and one I know for a s- certain there was a, there is this uh, uh, gamer channel. You know what was it? Upper echelon, and it, I think it has the uh, uh, biggest amount of views uh, hex is a cult uh, there is a video regarding how hex is a cult and he himself like he, he's I, I used to follow that guy because of gaming prior to this uh, video so I, uh, he is kind of transparent so he himself said that some member from inside the hex community, gave him all this information so yeah there were there are people who are against uh, in the hex community who are uh, kind of against uh, hex or rather 
somehow they are maybe jealous of richard or i don't whatever their personal reasons maybe but yeah not everyone with hex in their twitter handle is your friend yes diraj come with the spicy rumors man if you want to if you want to see uh, all the written evidence uh, it will all be shared in the hex guild telegram chat later nah it won't no like see i here i am aware i believe you I, man I, I here what i'm see, like I, I am I, I, hyper aware I, I, of when i'm being rec recorded right so yeah. i i keep my statements being aware and now that i know that there is a uh, law professional on stream with me <laughs> then i have to be extra careful of what i say but, but see we can see everything is visible on the charts uh, if people were actually uh, helping the hex community we wouldn't be seeing the chart of hex what it is right now but uh, you see there is in um, well uh, the way I've, my... I've, I've, I've thought about this for a bit and you know how everybody always talks about the fact that we have no uh, vc money in in pulse chain or or in in hex for that matter like there might have been some vc companies invest investing in hex or or minting their hex in the early stages with the rest of us but they had no special treatment so that led to a situation where there's maybe 20,000 maybe 4,000 people who now are in a situation where they have to share that wealth between themselves but in any other crypto that money would have just straight gone to the first 5 to 15 venture capitalists who would be, still be brut brutally dumping on the plebs who bought the top but because we don't have the vcs there's a lot more people who don't individually hold as much but they share the same fucking bag like it's all in there but because we don't have the vcs there's we just have to wait for the wait for the cake to grow bigger before we can start taking slices out of it yep uh, and now there's like a rush to the door every time it looks like there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel because people get get bored or they feel like it's it's my turn now god damn it i'm gonna i'm gonna exit no matter what it costs me or whatever For one but the money minutes. is there L like imagine it was only us four and like 16 other guys we would have been the venture capitalists who would have heard about this from richard in a in a hotel meeting somewhere fucking sure. i don't know brussels we would have coughed up the money and we, we would have had like these uh, fucking secret uh, mints that happen at a later stage or we would have had some fucking 40 50 percent allocation of all the all the tokens or we would have had a slice of the oa address or something like we could take out a million or two and nobody would be none the wiser because even though we had such a big share it, it would only be just a couple of guys but now those couple of guys are like four thousand uh turtles or how many are there squids ten thousand turtles they're sharing that pie that in other cryptos would have gone to just a handful of people. That's why it takes a, a while for the price to go up. Nice. I guess it's like we're uh, we can control where everyone goes in, but now what time frame they go out, depending on yeah, how exactly. they're locked. Yeah. Yeah. Because exactly. I, I was saying that the other day, I was like, some of the new people, I've seen them complain and all this, especially the ones that got here in 21 and all that. And they've, they got to dump more than I have. Because even though in paper, I because have they more. they were liquid. Yeah, they exactly. were liquid. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
because they were liquid and because they might have gotten here at two and three pennies right before we pumped in 21 and then just being able to dump two, three months later and think that that's the normal when we know that that was like, you yeah. know, that was the weird action of like everything that's happened in four years of hex, maybe that. And then the, the pump and t-shirt price in, in big payday, you know, from like 11,000 mm -hmm. to 16, I think those are the two biggest moves or at least the the ones that nobody expected and then all of a sudden it's like oh that can happen <laughs> yeah yeah so what's the t share price now how close uh, we're are almost we at thirty four thousand yeah from oh, ten thousand we're almost at thirty four that's it let me yeah. go check real quick because I knew when we were at thirty one I kept saying yeah we're at thirty one we're at thirty one and then all of a sudden we just boom went to like thirty three super super quick yeah, it's going to be interesting when when we pass that five year mark and people with the ten year stakes can yeah. start uh, thirty three thousand six hundred right now on Paul's chain thirty three thousand six hundred and four and thirty three thousand six seventy five on uh, Ethereum. So we're we're pumping yeah. up and to the right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still making almost 100 percent apy the early stakes it works like a motherfucker but i wonder what it's gonna look like after uh those 10 year stakes the ladies hands that have to sell at year five or year six and say somebody now does a quattro cinco they don't realize probably that once those uh, weak hands are out, the, the, like they're gonna take a million t-shirts with them, they're not coming back. So all the remaining t-shirts are make, uh, making a lot more yield yep. daily from that moment on. And guys are sleeping at the wheel a bit on yep. that. Maybe people might might wanna might wanna pop in a few stakes. Just in case, uh, just in case the market outwits you and and you get played out from your uh, holdings. That'll happen, and a lot of people won't even know that Hex can do that. You know, because all this time that they've been liquid, they might have not been DCAing, so they might not been trying to compete against the T-shirt rate. Uh, you know, yeah. acquiring a little bit more units to compete, to compete, yeah. to compete. And then all of a sudden, one day it'll be like, all right, 34, 34, 34, boom, and this much. Or I was thinking maybe it doesn't do that. Maybe just stay slow like it is. But then the price of Hex can also go up. So it's just that's that's why it's so hard to, to control the T-shirts because they're so dynamic. So you're either affected by the T-shirt rate, the price, or... You know, so mm. I think uh, it's going to surprise a few people. Uh, there has been some wild payouts on, on Ethereum uh, when when we had the emergency end stakes and shit. Like, mm -hmm. I think we, uh, didn't we break the, we, we broke Hex 19's record. Wow. One one day there. I, I, I think I remember that happening just like a week or two ago. Wow. Yeah, in in March when the EHEX hex, uh, thing uh, resurfaced, but I, I wanted to say a lot of things prior to this, but I say I would su submit up in, uh, you know, there is a Bollywood di dialogue like uh, Gao Basani Lutere Pele Age means like uh, the village hasn't settled yet and the looters have already um, uh, uh, jumped in. It's, I think, what kind of happened with, with Hex. Like, yeah, especially, well right, it's like right around, I would say, yeah, to the Pulse Chain uh, launch when people all these traders got uh, attracted to it and everybody uh, i guess yeah people they didn't actually stake their hex so uh, i i think uh, they were able to and 
it, it's like a, i i call it morey's law like uh, i am going to call it morey's law that the uh, the bullishness of the tweet is directly proportional to the size of the bag of the influencer uh, so <laughs> once they so once like they that. start the, the once they, they have dumped their bags they start uh, like all the negative publicity like Oh, the, the, like, <laughs> is that oh, the fun? Oh, I love that draw. Yeah, man. Uh, like, and these these are my observations. I, I also came up with the another law called Arthur's law, uh, dedicated to Arthur Hayes. You know, B- uh, Bitmax <laughs> from Bitmax. It, it's it, it's called uh, and it's a c- corollary to the Murphy's law. Like, uh, it's. if you have leverage you are going to be like liquidated and uh, yeah we we are we have seen this like multiple times people on blockchain you are once you are uh, what you call order is visible uh, people will take positions against it like they will try to get you every time bitmex was very famous for it like i so i think even richard said that like uh, it's rumored they had a liquidate all all button like <laughs> suddenly all the trades everybody both sides got liquidated and yeah, oh, yeah. i was in i was involved in several of those type of situations you you couldn't get out of the trade and you just watch yourself get wrecked and then you got an email notification bling man i got a lot of those emails back in the day all right guys so you're listening to four different hexakins on four different continents um all of us have been here for since the beginning and um I think I might have muted myself during the intro. So welcome everybody. Um typically this is the Hex Guilds YouTube uh channel, but YouTube is down right now for streaming. So um we're doing this on Twitter and recording it and going to post it later. You can grab a mic if you're listening to this, you can grab a mic uh, over at the Telegram chat which is t.me/hexfoodies. So that's the the Hex Foodies group is the Hex Guild group. Um so you guys we have we have current events of the day, uh you know, crypto every day is changing. Uh Nerd Girl got hacked. And I um so she says that all of her um stakes were emergency in stakes. She was completely drained. Can um, I before before you continue can I yeah. can I tell you a story about Nerd Girl? Uh when when she got on the scene and started streaming I noticed there's a lot of sort of white knightery going about her every time anybody said anything uh, slightly critical. And sure black people can be annoying and critical and shit and I I I was a bit angry at the time. uh she was uh, about to do a stream about what it's like to be a woman in crypto or something and and posted it in telegram all i said was it doesn't take long for a woman to turn the conversation to herself and she she replied hey you dickhead i hope you get hacked and you lose all your hex i hope your kids die in poverty but go on tell me about what happened to her <laughs> wow um i hope that was a true story because that would be terrible it for is. you to say that it is <clears throat> that's that's a true story i think i might have the screen capture of the uh, of the telegram post I met Probably her in, not. 
I met her in Vegas in in one of the the back room VIP areas um, while we were doing karaoke. Um, and she had no interest in carrying a conversation with me. So I, I just thought that that was because I wasn't there to like hire her or something, which may um, uh, go right in with this story. So nerd girl got hacked. And, she, and at first, whenever she announced this on Twitter, she says that she didn't know how it happened and she'd be interested in someone helping her understand how it happened. Well, then later on, she tweets that uh, in, the, in the same thread, okay, I figured out how I got hacked. She had, um, she had some potential client who I guess she was going to shill their shit for them. At the end of the interview, they said, hey, download this game and play it like the game that had to do with the thing that they were talking about. And so she downloaded it, played it, and that's how they got into her computer. And so they found the file where she was hiding uh, her private keys. So you'll you'll find a, a, a mixed feedback on Twitter if you scroll through it like a few people or have screenshotted her saying that a uh, hardware wallet or so, um, cold cold storage is is not necessary um, and then there's a few people who are who are like yeah I'm, I'm really sorry this happened to you and she says that it's it it was the it was everything that she had so First oh, thought good. for me is uh, we definitely need to split up our crypto mm -hmm. on several different wallets so that if one damn breaks, it doesn't kill everything. Right. Absolutely. And uh, not keep the fucking seed words on your computer, you fool. Yeah, that too. Yeah, the, the, the whole situation about, I think... <sighs> The hardware wallet conversation is always so controversial because I always say that the hardware wallet can also be a situation where, and I use hard, by the way, I use a couple of hardware wallets, a couple of different brands. So just an FYI, if I'm in crypto, I use hardware wallet. I don't care entering four extra pin numbers. It's, I know it's annoying, but. I don't know if you have a wallet that you want to use for main transactions and you're going to use it for main things, then maybe use that one without a hard wallet, right? And then just use 50 bucks in that wallet and then all your main wallets are protected. And then you just transfer into your cold storage. But absolutely. Anyways. There's no need, there's no reason to f fiddle with all your crypto all the time. Like, yeah, that too. No reason. Everything no, that too. Try exactly. to diversify that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, diversify the or mitigate the damage, I guess is what because yeah, if you lose, let's say you have, I don't know, a thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, but you divide it into four wallets, one of them gets hacked, you just lost twenty five percent, not a hundred percent. And yeah, and then the other seventy five percent you don't touch it. It's just there. Yeah. yeah Finn. I'm 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 often in in uh in this uh Australian uh, Adam uh Oh my God! What's his last Smith? Name? Uh, Stokes. Now uh, uh, Stokes's stream, and there was this uh, fellow Stokesican uh, who had a house fire, and he lost everything, like uh, everything burned down. But luckily, he didn't lose all his crypto, so he he only lost the, I think a quarter of his crypto because of he he took uh, said measures that you just spoke about. So he had. His wallets spread over on on I think several states and, and like yeah. So you mentioned of the fire too, Finn. Like if if yeah. if you guys have your seed phrases, make sure that you guys are stamping them because that's another thing. You guys are on a fire. You have a hard wallet. The hard wallet melts. Your seed phrases just got burned, and then your crypto just it's it's gone. Yeah, because yeah, gone. you just lost all your um. And I guess what I was trying to say about the hard wallet earlier, I don't think I finished uh, 
what I, you know, I, I was saying like what Diraj says, I always go on tangents too. Um, it's just that a lot of people they'll just buy all these hard, fancy hard wallets, especially like, you know, the most expensive ones, 150 or whatever. So you, you guys don't even need that. Just get like the, the $60 one, you know, the Trezor yeah, with the, 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 just with the yeah, 24 the word, the 24 <laughs> word one you where you can put the 25th seed word into exactly. it. Exactly. So, if so someone even gets if hacked, they, yeah, even if they get, a hold of the physical device if they don't know the fucking 25th word they get a completely different set of uh of keys and completely different set of accounts so they can like yeah it's gonna be a really more complicated five dollar wrench attack because they're, they're gonna have to torture it out of you <laughs> <laughs> right and protect it and protect the paper ones like just make sure that you guys are spending the, the 15 20 bucks to get your your washers or to get your actual plates if you wanted a little more fancy i, I went with the little washer thing and the and the screws yeah. and the washers are perfect. so yeah, and they're like nothing nobody cares about a washer or something but if you have some cool like credit card lookalike type of thing with yeah, weird okay. that's that's intriguing you want to like see what the fuck is going on but if i see a washer or two somewhere i'm like oh i almost thought that was money yeah uh, fuck that shit and, and it can get hidden really you know so if you were to like yeah. hide it somewhere in puerto rico or something where it's a little more humid or something you know you're not gonna get rusty or something because you got yourself something that's rust proof you protected it well if it catches yeah. fire, then you can go in and get it because, yeah, you don't want to yeah, just it does everything. Make. Yeah. It's just I've yeah. noticed that that it's just a lot of people, they'll get their hard wallets, but then for some reason they don't understand that you're still protecting your seed phrases. You know what I mean? Like they'll, they'll get the hard wallet, yeah. but then the seed phrases is just some paper. I always joke, I use this as a joke, that don't get a hard wallet and then put your seed phrases in the McDonald's wrapper on, on top yeah. of the table. Because if someone yeah. just gets access to that, it doesn't matter if you have a hard wallet inside Fort Knox protected by tanks, they'll just be able to get access to the blockchain and extract your money in a different route. So just... The idea of the hard wallet is if you get hacked, like like sadly looks like this happened to her, uh, and then she cannot Tragic. protect it. Tragic. Yeah. Well, it's just yeah. I mean, we we've talked about this whole situation, so I just uh, uh, I hope others can learn and then protect themselves, and then I hope that she can get back. Like that that story that you said, Finn. Just it, was, it, yeah. it, it gave me like a doesn't little bit it of just melt? Chills, doesn't, brother, it like, just, doesn't it whew. just melt your heart? Like such a beautiful person. Have it's just yeah, shit. I've actually like, so many things happen in our internet right now that it's like um <clears throat> I'm very uh in the last like couple of days too. I don't know if you guys know, but it's yeah, I've I've been uh my eyes have been starting to open about certain things that are happening in our community and how we I guess we used to do things in twenty one, twenty two, and then now everything has changed. So everything is a controversy or everything is, you know, but yeah, that story that you said, wow. Uh, whew. Yeah. So, so it, yeah. Just, in, just in case people get any ideas about making her whole again and, and rescuing her, just wanted to just let it out there. Know that the people you're, uh, you know, that already happened. Though, are, fan, I'm, sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure it happens. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, our community is just like that. White nidery, like that. yeah. White nidery is a, is abound. Yeah. I am. Um, and just to tam uh, timestamp this conversation, like we always do, like like to do every week. Um, two days ago was the solar eclipse um, passing through the United States. That was April eighth. Today is April tenth. Go ahead, ID. So yeah, guys. Um, what else should we? Uh, what else should we talk about? Should we just have like an open of what's going on and all the changes from? Because I, I kind of wanted to cover that. And I think Darash was like discussing it. It was perfect the way he was doing it. So we could continue what he was doing, or we yeah, can. Because yeah. um, um, a lot of this. Yeah, Darash. Sorry about that. Uh, no. Uh, so uh, I. 
Yeah, the bro. thing is, uh, I I had a couple of things to talk about. Uh, first of all, regarding hack, we have to uh, always assume it is a hack. It can, cannot be proven or disproven that whether it was a hack or maybe later after realizing that oh, it, people have realized that this is my wallet, uh, then it's like, oh, I got hacked. We can never know. We and I will just yes I am a I call myself the most toxic uh, hex maximalist so I, and I'm turning like you see the last couple of years I have been like I have people tra- trace down my YouTube channel and comment on it like you are a piece of shit because of my youtube comments on their videos so i know i am very i am a and i like i troll a lot and that is how i started off in the hex community but uh, like i realized that yeah it's you know when yeah when your portfolio is kind of that uh, high you feel kind of relaxed so i i had turned down that toxicity or noise but i guess i have to come back to it uh, somehow uh, where was i yes that that thing apart and i have said this i think on this stream as well like on hex guild as well hardware wallets yes they are good uh but consider them like condoms y- y- yes they can prevent things but yeah. like uh, not uh, putting your dick in the every hole you see uh, also protects you from a lot of things and in case of crypto uh like there is the biggest challenge or biggest threat for security is social engineering hardware wallets and hacks come, are very rare and few like social engineering and smart contract risk uh, is a different issue uh, uh, together and uh, rug pulls like the, so so i fell prey so, to social engineering just just to like iron this into the fabric um one time <laughs> inviting sorry. freedom sorry was raising money for chickens for her friend over in Kenya. And so her friend, the chef over in Kenya. And so I was like, yeah, I'll sponsor you by like buying one of these chickens. So I said to her like, Hey, how do you want the payment? And I made it public uh, by commenting on her t- or below her tweet. And then, so she said, well, send me Vin- me, uh, Venmo. And I said, well, I don't have Venmo. How about PayPal? Someone saw that and they created a fake account with her picture and a similar name so that I I overlooked it. And um, I ended up taking that person's uh, PayPal address and just blindly sending, you know, $15 over there to her to that person. So, and then, and then it was all while I was supposed to be waiting for, um, uh, inviting freedom to get back to me. So that's, that's an example of social engineering where you you were just up in the moment. You wanted to get something done. You wanted to do something good. You had the energy to do it and you were, you were just tricked to get on the wrong slide. That sucks. Yeah, uh, that's fifteen bucks. We'll never get back. Oh into no! The hex ecosystem, it's gone. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, imagine and, that money could have been used to pump hex. God damn it! Maybe that person's chicken. continuing to watch everything that's going on inside of our community, thinking that they could get mm. more out of us, but yet they continue just to see pulse chain, pulse chain, pulse chain. And then also, what I wanted to add to the the hacking. Uh, and, and dividing up your wallets, like I've got in order to organize things in my mind and uh, in my realm, in my office, let's say, uh, I have a I have a bunch of titles for my wallets. So I have a certain wallet that's called the fuck around wallet. 
And that's, that's where I might get a little bit risky, but, Mm -hmm. but I still take my security seriously. I, I still, um, install and uninstall MetaMask three times before and after, uh, doing anything. So lead us on Daraj. You had more to say. So, so and then also, it, hey, Hex yeah. on Air, if you want to chime in or give us a, a ball out of left field, go for it. No, uh, Hex on Air's in the room with the nice. four rest of us. And then up, there's, there's 55 people um, listening or watching on Twitter. And then um, thanks so much identity block for putting or or one of your guys uh put a link in your your militia chat oh you got it and so i, I bet you know 30 of those folks are the militia guys <laughs> awesome oh man I've, I've never uh been in a chat with these many this many people listening usually it's like seven people <laughs> when, Shout out to the when i'm on the stream yeah this is great exposure for finbear and then we're also 45 minutes long right now So I was saying, uh, like, <laughs> uh, uh, if you like, pe- are people aware there is something known as uh, virtual virtual machines, which can help you test uh, new software. So because she g- gave the, she said the the developers of a uh, new game, crypto game, wanted. Uh, them to test out uh, uh, like the game she could have created a virtual machine a windows machine and uh, it's po- like uh, install the game on that so you don't your main ma- computer doesn't get hacked uh, these things like so security like th- there is kind of layers of security that are required like yeah so uh, if yeah but are... Diraj, Diraj, you're forgetting that uh she's a she's a woman tech journalist she doesn't have to know anything about actual tech look man like that's a different <laughs> issue. That's a... Raj's brain is like thinking, what should I say? But she's right a now? princess. <laughs> Think about it, Raj. Think about it. <laughs> see, look, that, that, see, I'm trying to keep myself civil. Please don't. <laughs> like, I, 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 but you just I, talked I about I'm... dicks and holes, man. Come on. <laughs> it, it's... No, it's different when you are talking about arbitrary things and when you are commenting on a specific True. person. Like, yeah. True. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, anyways, uh, just uh, in uh, case we're not we're not like making fun of her getting like hacked. It's just it was what Finn, um, the comment that Finn said. It was kind of uh, funny how Durash reacted. Look, uh, the thing is, yeah, like, I understand Finbear's situation as well. Like, yeah, if somebody said that to me, yes, uh, right now I would be in a different mood altogether. But yeah, that, that like from our perspective, so, she she held her private keys on her computer in a specific file, so uh, she would have been screwed had she had a hardware wallet anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, over. I guess, thank you for for saying that, Iko. I guess that's what I was trying to say earlier about the importance of still, even after you get the hardware wallet, give the importance to the seed phrase. You know, remove. Don't ever take pictures. Don't put her in your computer because you can get hacked, or you know, you can get other type of malware. So just make sure that you're separating them. And then protect them from paper, so stamp them because you can get water damage, fire, whatever. Uh, the, the paper can rot, the ink can can go away, so stamp them. Sorry about that, Darash. We're all gonna have boating accidents. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, what that's, I was that's talking about virtual, machine, virtual machines and. Uh, 
yeah air gapping i don't think anybody practices that anymore due to the advent of uh, hardware wallets but that is also something i think it, it was kind of popular in 2017 till 17 uh, 2017 like you do do the signature and the transaction while you are offline and just connect uh, to the computer to publish the uh, transaction now that was for bitcoin uh, i i don't think uh, it, it's it's still some kind of security practice to keep in mind uh, for me like yeah i just de- delete everything after like uh have your seed phrases written somewhere safe and like yeah we install metamask every time and do your transaction that is how hex is supposed to work like do your transaction and one to start your stake and then wait wait delete everything and when it's just keep a reminder of when your stake ends and uh, reinstall metamask when that happens and uh, <laughs> enter uh, and then end stake the second thing real fast i, I want to say that hex scout has a great website where you don't have to connect your wallet you can just type in um, or copy and paste your wallet address and scroll down and look at your stakes your active stakes and you're able to expand that view down at the bottom right there's a little option to expand the view and when you do that it will give you a countdown ticker of your next stake coming due which is is really nice oh, go, that's awesome go for that's it great. Raj. sorry uh- uh, no, uh, no. Uh, yes, I re- finally remember. I wanted to ask uh, identity block regarding uh, the Pulse Chain Foundation, and what are I, 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 I no in the in the the real Pulse Chain Foundation that is your uh, and what are your kind of goals or yes. I do assume it's. Uh, uh, if I remember correctly, it's a educational foundation. So, right. are you kind of publishing any uh, like uh, educational courses or anything like that? Well, as so of right now, that's the plan. You know, like right now, we've been trying to um, we've been trying to figure out this other situation with the other group because we don't want someone giving money to a group or entity, meaning them. And then thinking that they're associated to us and thinking that we're going to give them some type of tax deduction attached to the, you know, the tax benefits that we'll, that we'll be able to provide. Um, so that's the, been the main reason, because whoever is donating to that group, I want them to understand that, that we're, you know, don't be coming to us in December asking me for a 501c3 type of receipt, because I, I don't know nothing about that group. When it comes to what we're trying to do, exactly that, you know, we're going to try to educate. We're going to try to focus on on crypto awareness. We're going to try to focus on DeFi. We're going to try to focus on the basics of basics, you know, so <laughs> what you guys were talking about. So from starting the computer, the browser, the extensions, how to load up your Internet money wallet, how to load up your MetaMask, how to interact with some of the uh, the middlemen that, as you were discussing, there are some of the problems that we're having now. It's just that we're trusting way too much on the middlemen. So when it comes to us taking uh, that responsibility of being our own banks, we we you know we we don't know. We're we're confused. We think that three steps is too much. We we think that why why would I ever do that? Why do I have to click on this IPFS link? 
um, in that type of situation. So that's what we'll do, you know, instead of focusing on like, what's the next shiny object? How do we shield to this group? How do we do this and that, that we know now for three years that hasn't worked, right? Because we've, we've done that already. We've done the little tours, we've done the conferences, we've done everything. And right now it's like, I'm trying to find who have we onboarded the last three years through these type of methods, you know, who did dropped everything they had to do they didn't know anything about crypto hacks, nobody, and then dropped everything they had to jump on a plane to buy one of these tickets to onboard into our community. And that's about my thinking, you know? So it's like, right, that we, we tried that already. Shout out to RH for trying it all through like 2021, and he was doing it all in through Europe. But that was his thing, you know? He had worked all through 2020, so he had, you know, that was what he was going to do. But then now it's just, we tried it, you know, the guys from, um, from the crypto spar book they tried it and then it's been tried and all the situations so i just let's focus on uh what uh what worked through 2020 let's focus on education let's focus on um bringing it back to basics and that way we don't have uh we don't have the issues that we're having now it seems like in the last like year or two i've been debating people that didn't even know about the basics of hex you know like we were discussing earlier like since they weren't staked they didn't even know what was happening. I mean, I've had this conversation with people that claim they're hexagon and everything. They've said to me, like, no, because you guys are down, because blah, 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 because all they can see is the price, right? So they think that the price was this and the price is this now, and they don't understand that if you locked under this amount of price, you know, two zeros, three zeros, whatever, you're still up. And if you didn't move that money because maybe you were getting referrals or self-referrals and then you were stacking them on top of coins that were also paying you more. Yeah, yeah. Plus all right? the fucking yield. Plus all exactly. the yield. And, that's and a, that's what I was mentioning earlier. Like, in, uh, oh. I think it was yesterday or two days ago. That I was saying like, well, there was, there was two hexagons. There was the hexagons that as they were getting millions and millions of units that were fucking worthless because all through 2020, you could get a million units of hex, but if there were four zeros, five zeros, well, was it worth, you know, was it much? Probably not. But if you were stacking that million units and then you just waited and patiently, you know, and now you're making 90% after five, uh, four, three and four years and you're still up, you know, might not be a thousand X like we, like some of us did in no, 21, but, it, but it's yeah, way up. It doesn't feel that bad. Yeah. Still up hundreds of X. But there are some people that as they were getting the tons and tons of units in referrals because maybe they have big channels early in 2020 they never locked and you can tell you can tell they never locked because they they don't mention ever you know genesis stakes they don't never mention making high yield they don't ever mention the benefits of of long-term staking or or the ladders as they come out every quarter or anything like that they just show all kinds of other new coins and then I guess it's what Gerard says. Like maybe their bag is smaller because then it's like, well, why are they shilling all these other shit coins if their main bag is hex? Like if you if you were to have something, like I, I don't know. I I just I don't want to throw numbers because I always like piss off someone. But it's just if you have a X amount of what of hex, then you just your main focus is still going to be hex, even at this prices. Like I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, well, you know, in reality, yeah. I know in five ten years uh, the price could stay the same. And I'm going to make a shit, you know, I'm going to, sorry, I was about to curse. I'm going to make a ton in, in hex units, you know, like, I don't know what the dollar is going to happen. I think the Fed is in my side because the Fed keeps telling me one thing and then the treasury and the, the politicians do another, you know, they say, oh, well, we need to cut. We need to like keep inflation low, blah, 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 blah. But then the like, over there, it's like, yeah, we're going to build a bridge to the moon. And then they're like, yeah, that's probably going to cost like a quadrillion dollars. So like, and, and so there's no austerity measures from government. They're not cutting. They're not doing anything. So I know that the debt is going to be $40 trillion in four or five years. And where's all that money going to? It's not going to go to, oh. to gold. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's going to go to crypto. Me, We're going to be at five or $6 trillion in four or five years. Let me, let me tell you what's keeping me motivated is is we we pay the highest uh, tax in the world over here and like over 55 percent uh, like once you spend your money and you pay value-added tax 
you end up paying like over 70 percent of your income in different taxes and what do, what, what do we get in in return for it is our judicial system is so slow that it's uh, it's deemed a human rights offense by the European uh, Human Rights Court. Uh, we, we, everybody who gets quote unquote free healthcare, that means that you're in line for a knee replacement for something like one and a half to three years. And I just learned that out of every paycheck that I pay, any amount of tax that is taken from me, over 30% of it goes directly to paying pensions for people who are on pension. So it's not like attributed to my savings. It doesn't count a lick into my pensions when I'm old enough. But a third of my salary is being taken at the moment to pay pensions. So this shit is not going to last for a for a long time so that that's why i'm rolling my stakes because i know they're gonna have more value than any fucking pension mm -hmm. that the government is gonna promise they're gonna be good for in in, in what 25 30 years i don't think so i'm i'm i'm, I'm thinking the staking hex is way surf, uh, safer as an option than than trusting those idiots in charge with my money yes sir I'm glad that you touch on that one, Finn, because that's exactly what I was thinking in like middle of 2020 when I was like, all right, I need to use this as like my retirement. Like there's there's not going to be Social Security for me. No. Like, I'm sure that I'm going to yeah. get some little digits or something in my, you know, my little government CBDC or whatever. But I mean, what is that going to buy? You know, so it's just going to be a joke. I'm sure they'll be like, oh, yeah, here, here's your thousand dollars a month or whatever. And then, you know, to yeah. go to McDonald's is $45, to buy milk is $10, to buy this is the other. And then $1,000 of retirement does nothing. The 401k has been diluted. And then mm. if you don't have a plan B, C, D, you know, you're screwed. Like, And, and if, if, if you're yeah. waiting, I'm sorry, I don't want to be a futter, but if, if anyone's waiting for the government to, like, you know, come up with some savior type of social security like you're kidding yourself guys so yeah. we need to take they're, care they're, of our it, own retirement they're, yeah they're the idiots who got us into this mess they're, they're not gonna think yep. us out of it it's gonna be something completely out of, outside yeah. of the system no in the states That's it'll be some state. type of new program that they'll you know it'll be like the new shiny object and they say how oh, it's like the savior but then when we look under the hood it's the same BS, you know, the dollar gets diluted. Mm. They keep doing the same thing. They print to the moon and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, here's your $2,000. And then the you're same. like, yeah. yeah, but it doesn't it's buy me same. nothing. Yeah, it's <laughs> the same fucking trap. Yeah. I think we're slowly walking towards this idiotic, like universal pay type of shit, which is it's universal prison. People just don't think anymore. Right. They, they don't like. Good point. That's like living in China. Everybody makes like shitty money, and and you're you're constantly like short, short a little bit short of something. True. Not, not everything all the time, but constantly something's missing, and it's a little bit crappy for everybody. Right. Uh, Maybe uh, if uh, you're until, in that situation, uh, yeah. Uh, un until you. Uh, yeah, un until you utter a, a, a wrong opinion or or have a wrong belief or st state a, a, a biological fact in a wrong setting or something, and all of a sudden you're you're an enemy of the state of, and your mm -hmm. bank account doesn't work and yeah, you know, you're you're fucking Ooh, trapped. Finn is getting into the spicy subjects that I like because I've been I was covering about that last night, um, specifically coming from the Treasury Department because they're now in China, meaning Yellen, or at least some type oh, of yeah, studio or one. something. Yeah, it looked kind of odd. Yeah. I, I think it was like a studio. I really do because she had like some type I, I of things either falling on her or I don't know if those were I bugs bet was, or I, I what bet, was that. I bet there was fucking. I bet there was like four people on stilts outside of the picture, just throwing shit into the air. 
It looks, it looks. <laughs> it looks like, like someone uh, just used AI for the first time, and they just said like, uh, like they yeah, just overdid it. You know, <laughs> that's so that that's so typical Chinese crap. The, the the shit that they think they get away with is ridiculous. Like some of the some of the videos that come from like Chinese diplomats and shit that they share on Twitter. Like, look at how cool this is, and it's like. You can clearly see that anybody with a Windows 98 could do like a better job at, at like doing this fucking fake video of these high high speed trains and shit. But then it has the audio track of 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 like Tom Thomas the engine. You know, it was fucking ridiculous <laughs> shit that they share. And 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 stuff that you see that it's clearly like AI generated, absolute bullshit. And they claim that definitely that it's, looked it's, AI. It's, yeah, because you figure yeah, that if she it, had all that stuff just falling on her for forty five minutes, she was gonna be like, you know, like some some yeah, of it might get in her mouth. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah. was that, how is she just talking? And she's got all this little flirty things just like flowing around. I was like, that makes no yeah. sense. But yeah. the, the big thing that I caught out of that conversation is how she was all about how there's all this cooperation happening and they want to have all this clarification. So that there's no issues in the China, uh, uh, South China Sea and all that. But yeah. I mean, cooperation, because it, it almost sounded like the U.S. They, is they just, accepting more and more of what China is giving us. If, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah, but like China is in a interesting situation because they they have like thousands of kilometers of border with Russia, and they already are like I think they're two of the biggest trading partners because of the land border and stuff. So it's really difficult to see a situation where China would choose uh, U.S. as an ally over its own bordering neighbor, in particular right. when. Its bordering neighbor is jam-packed full of uranium oil. and oil and all all sorts of goodies that that the Chinese could uh, find some True. uses on the other uh, other uh, shore of the country. But still, China is a paper di- paper tiger, and and they're transacting the people, more in digital yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, but people's li- uh, what the fuck is the army called? People's Liberation Army has never won a single combat ever, and like m- mechanically, technically, it's so subpar. The stuff that they bring out is is like absolutely horrendous crap. So people shouldn't think that China is some AI-driven superpower with like five G. <laughs> capabilities and and super fast internets and whatever like it's it's an absolute sham of a country and and it goes like a like a clam at the bottom of a river with its one leg slash tongue sticking out and it's reacting to everything that's happening on the outside but it has very little to to in in terms of real power like there their latest their latest oh. uh, a- aircraft carrier is is rusting in the harbor and it's already broke i i think they had a huge fire which the chinese the tried testing? to put it out is, is there, that's yeah. the one that got, i heard about yeah. that <laughs> yeah, the chinese were putting it out like no we were just uh, testing out the uh, fire extinguishing stuff and yeah i don't know if yeah, that was embarrassing in- yeah, I don't know if the test includes burning the entire fucking ship down, but that's what that's how they tested it. It's for insurance. Yeah, yeah. China is not. And you know like when a, I heard that conversation, it's not power. It, it it's like a kid in a corner, oh. holding its breath, trying to get like uh, its parents to notice him. But like, then you know what? Let, let's let's go. Let's let's get deep on that conversation because I've heard that from this guest that Joe Rogan ha- has had a few times, and then he gives the actual numbers, which is what I like. You know, I don't like when uh, Ray Dalio talks about it or or this guy Bass because their way of talking is like, oh yeah, like the, I can put in a ton of money in there, you know, and get this much, and that's all they think about. 
but he he's it, talking it, about actual like, numbers, population. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and then like yeah, he it, sees yeah. that it's gonna be a bad situation over there. But then why is it that the China politicians has been, uh-huh. China has been in decline, yeah, but, like in population decline for more than twenty years. People people suspect that China is actually barely one billion people. They've they've had to uh for they they forged and fudged their uh, uh, census data for for several decades because they didn't want to be bested by India, and that's that's already happened. India is already bigger by population than China, and that's that's been a big setback for them, like uh, becoming the runner up and and not the not the king of the hill anymore. But you know what? But then those same numbers are the ones that they use also for gold. No, like they remember how there was always all these rumors that China had all these like tons and tons of gold that never came out of China. But then for yeah. some reason, everyone talked about them. You know, you, you heard Mike Baloney talk about them. All the big gold metal guys would talk about. Oh, yeah, they did. They did sell uh, uh, gold locally. Like there was a like, vending machines where you could buy gold. But I'm I'm sure those machines got cleared up pretty pretty <laughs> freaking quick because there's nothing in China that people would like other than, than a store of value value yes, that, sir. that that yeah that would hold now they are, the only thing that they have is the ghost cities and and the, and the houses that are never gonna be in a in oh, livable condition. That. But it's still better than than keeping your money in a bank where it just dilutes in value. So people buy these, like they make these idiotic real estate deals where they put they pay the entire sum of an apartment in a building that isn't even a hole in the ground, and they pay the con- wow. contractor, they pay the contractor the full mm. amount of the apartment. At that mm. point, and their their uh, mortgage starts running that day, and they're in debt, and they're paying off the debt, <sighs> and they have just a promissory note of like getting a flat in a building that isn't even a hole in the ground oh, yet. Wow. And two months later, that's up forty percent in value. <laughs> so your paper, so not the actual so that's like building. awesome, man. So now now you're now you're like a real estate oh, developer wow. now you can you can sell your house to be at profit to oh. the next Joe Schmo and make some make some nice gains that's the chinese Dude, real estate business the only they have, place yeah, yeah the only place where they can store money like they have like huge high rises that are basically made out of cardboard boxes and chewing gum and oh, no. earwax and uh, uh, no, everybody knows that it's not a house meant for living. That they have a particular name for a house that's good enough to live in, and then there's a house that you kind of own as a, a as an investment. Like you, you wow. need to know if you're talking about a house or like a hole in the ground that you have right. a mortgage in. I've seen that here with actually really, really good properties, you know, properties that maybe you got in at 300 or 400 and then they go up to like five or 600. But these properties are either like really close to like Disney. So for example, there was a lot of people buying properties, like you said, you know, just there's a patch of dirt. And then they said, yeah, just, you know, just give me 20 grand, 50 grand, and then you own it and I'll give you the house in two years. Uh, and then by the time these houses were were delivered, then now there was a second and third development right next to them. And these developments were yeah. now like million dollar houses. So then the million dollar houses took up the two fifty houses to three and four and five hundred thousand dollar houses. That's the only place that I've seen it. But it, but again, this is like next mm-hmm. to like Disney World. So there's people like obviously doing like Airbnbs for like like you know, yeah, two and three hundred dollars yeah. a, a weekend. Yeah, exactly. It's like huge yeah. amounts of money. Yeah, yeah that that makes that makes sense. But yeah, in China they can have something <laughs> like they'll build enough houses to house two hundred thousand people, and there's like four hundred people living there, 
oh, wow. yeah, it looks absolutely wild. Yeah, I've I've followed this uh, channel called ADV China on on YouTube, and they have this series where they drive their motorbikes through the entire country. They're everywhere, and these guys are fluent fluent uh, Chinese speakers, both of them. Uh, but they're uh, like European dudes, so they kind of have a European perspective on it. Oh, the other one's actually South African, not European, but yeah, white guys anyway, in China. And that's a great show, everybody should have a look. But yeah, that's where I uh, saw the videos where they were driving through these ghost towns. And and yeah, it's it's unbelievable how much energy and concrete they've spent to to build uh, basically nothing they'll just tear it down and build it again in a few years once they deem the buildings uh, inhabitable you can see them like they, they don't have any basic infrastructure if it rains a bit every street is flooded because there's no sewers they just put the sewer lids uh, right on top of asphalt and run over them with the with the rollers so it looks like you have a sewage system in the city but you don't you just have a, everything just floods when it rains because nobody's ever gonna live there and nobody was ever planned uh, to live oh, there wow. so yeah, yeah, yeah so my, my belief is that um we have the world like like we are the most organized and we're also being used and um governments are going to sit there and and point at these other countries that we don't really as a large populace a large mass we don't really have a, a true perspective of them so they can demonize make them the enemy in order to get what they want out of us so I believe that Cuba is one of the the, the biggest outliers of this idea uh, to Americans, especially Texans. I'm I'm over here in Texas, um, and then China has been for so long. Um, that that's my thoughts on that. Yeah, it's funny how like Cuba because it it doesn't have such a like a it's not as densely populated and and I, I bet it has a lot to do with the culture and and the overall mentality of the people there the cubans still seem way more relaxed even though they're communists like chinese they're really uptight communists which the first kind is like you're already a communist you can try to chillax a bit like the cubans so we have a new person to our chat, Staked Goat. Uh, do you want to chime hey, in? Man. I guess he'll stay quiet. That's fine. This might not be a safe space, but I guess you you know what's best for you. Hey guys. Hey. I was hey man. Just eavesdropping and enjoying yeah. the conversation there. Yeah. That's cool. How's it going? Great. How yeah, are your I, How are your T-shares? Are they protected? <laughs> they're They're out there a ways, so I'm just wait, waiting patiently. We're saying nice. protected as far as um, your 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 private keys are are um, in they're a stable place, not on your computer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my, 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 my keys are, are secure. This, I'm, I'm holding them tightly. This eclipse energy that's that's come across us, it, it feels like if things are uh, going to fail, they might fail now. I've had a few things in my life. Um, ID expressed earlier that there were a few things that he's not going to pinpoint um, inside the community that um, have happened. And... Um, then there's nerd girls situation um sec within hours ago um announced that they were going to sue uh uniswap and richard tweeted about that and a lot of people are tweeting now yes, oh sir. Tragic, man. i just yeah. heard about this 
like we've been going on for quite a bit. I know we we said we're gonna get into the uh, like the the news events. So why don't you is is that like all you all you know about the subject, or could you elaborate a bit? That's please? that's all I have right now. Um, and then also to give us a, a timer perspective, we're at an hour and nineteen minutes. Oh, it's already overtime ID. We're going to get our second serving of coffee for free because we've gone over an hour. Let's do it. I've been drinking coffee the whole time. The, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to talk about that too. So I'm going to do a little stream about, uh, uh, Uniswap getting that Wells notice from our good old friend Gary G. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what it's all about. They're having too much fun, so that 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 might be it. I was joking the other day on Twitter that uh, since they're going to Richard for actions that hadn't even happened at the time on the mixers, uh, the oh, next yeah. thing they're going to go after uh, a beef tannin from Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta hey, make dude, sure that I, he doesn't I, get that almanac. I, 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 I wanted to tell you that your stream with Hexologist was man, it, it was the bee's knees, man. I, awesome. I, 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 I had such good vibes after the stream for days after watching it. Awesome, dude. That's what I wanted. It was on that day that we were like super dipping, and it was like, you know what? Like it, it, right now is a good time, and I've been wanting to talk to Exo since. Uh, Price since we did the launch, and he did like, like yeah. I don't know if it was a twenty-four hour stream or, or or it was like a long stream, but but yeah, yeah, it was a good one. People should check it out if you haven't seen it. Thank you, brother. So yeah, guys, that's on the uh, blockchain trends channel. So just type identity block or blockchain trends. It should should be probably like now, like ten episodes ago already, because I. I tried yesterday to cover everything that was happening with the treasury and ended up being like four separate streams. Uh, oh, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, the treasury was yeah. like everywhere yesterday. Like, bro. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was like, I'm going to watch the identity block stream and uh, the, the sort of drifted somewhere else and then came back and man, he's still going. And then, <laughs> then uh, third yeah, bro, it was like four different yeah. streams yesterday. It's just that there was the there was this guy out of Yemo talking in Washington. I thought that was important because I don't know who that guy is, and he's some type of deputy secretary. But he's you could tell that he's got some power, like he was selected by someone with power. And the fact that the politicians were all like stopping to be all like, "You're so smart, sir," and all that stuff, I was like, "That's weird." Like we never see these politicians like kiss ass to anyone. And for this yeah. guy, supposedly they were, or, I mean, not supposedly, I was looking at it, you know what I mean? Two of them, yeah. even like old school, even this guy Mendes, that he's been there, what, like 20, whatever, 30 years, I don't even know. And he was all like kissy kissy with this guy. So I'm assuming this guy at some point, it's going to be he's leading gonna, the treasury. He, or he's going to come up with some kooky new ideas and it's going to be so much easier to accept it because... The kooky ideas come from this guy who everybody knows is a genius. We've already seen it on TV several, several Oh, he's times. trying it. No, he's yeah. trying it. Yesterday, if you if you look at everything that he was saying yesterday, even as the politicians kept telling him, hey, your focus shouldn't be where the money is, you know, because he just kept saying, hey, I need more tools to protect against crypto. And they're like, yeah, my guy, but the problem is not crypto. The problem is the money. They're giving them the money in, 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 you know, whatever other fiat, you know, so it doesn't matter. They're giving them to them in dollars or, or at some point CBDCs. But you could tell that what he wants is control of crypto because at the time they're done dealing with that situation in two weeks, the powers will remain. And then the ones mm -hmm. affected will be us because we'll, we're the ones in DeFi and then we're the big bad people trying to move our little 20 and 50 bucks. And yeah, uh, how dare you? Yeah, exactly. I mean, he kept saying uh, that my biggest frustration yesterday is that what, what blockchain gives us is the, the, the ledger, you know, the accounting 
feature. So we can, they, they could say, hey, uh, we have 25 guys moving a million dollars. They could have said that 50 different times for all the subjects that they kept talking about. They were talking about fentanyl, drugs, trafficking, all kinds of things. But then not once they mentioned specific numbers. And then the one dude, yeah. one of the politicians that actually mentioned numbers. He said that the cartels are moving billions of dollars in crypto. And I was like, bro, who's moving billions of dollars? That makes no sense because in reality, moving should mean the whole transaction. Not that someone's yeah. going from, you know, point A to point B and then they're still in the blockchain. No, I'm talking about someone comes in with a big old truck full of like drugs and then the other person pays them and this person goes to their bank and off, you know, off ramps up a couple million dollars out of this transaction of, you know, I don't know, Colombian flour. Yeah. But my point is that's not happening. That's not happening. We're seeing no. it ourselves and we're moving money no. just out of no, like what speculating. They do is, and, uh, oh, yeah, what, they, what they do is they go to a nice reputable bank like uh, our Finnish uh, Nordea and uh, they uh -huh. they pay that bank to launder the money on their behalf <laughs> that's that's what happens like that bank that ac actively uh, like fucks with people's transactions when they try to put their money into crypto that bank is actually involved in the biggest money laundering uh, crime ever to be caught in in criminal uh, history but there's are still good enough people wow. to know that you shouldn't spend your money in crypto well then that's there. that's just like happens here then because here jp morgan they're in some type of i mean i don't know where that ended and i don't know if it was now that i think about it, i don't know if it was jp morgan or citibank but one of them two had some type of ownership in a in a ship that was like filled with all kinds of drugs and stuff, and it got busted in in the. Oh yeah, East Coast. I saw that. Yeah, 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 I saw yep. that news. Yeah, it was the owner. I, of don't, the, I don't know what's gonna happen with that. And I have JP Morgan gonna start slinging in the streets or what? <laughs> but yeah. they got the inventory. Yeah. yeah, but I got some real serious Breaking Bad vibes out of it. Yeah, no, it was it was very odd. Uh, like, yeah, that's that's a lot of stuff moving around. So there's a lot of people who are probably still in in great danger after after that shipment got stopped. I I want to know the resolution on that because I know I know in, in Puerto Rico sometimes even when when inflation would go up a little bit that would create chaos in the streets. You know, when it was like drug related, because you know that if you're buying a, a dime bag or you're buying this or that or the other, not to give not street advice, guys, but like it, the streets are not easy to just pump the prices. It's, it's not that simple. So they have to like scheme other ways. They have to do shrinkflation. <laughs> so like I know that anytime that there was issues in the in the streets like that you know everything got a little bit more expensive and then the five bag looked more like a 450 bag um yeah people start like disappearing in the streets and all kinds of mess so a big Damn ship inflation. like that disappears Damn inflation i know right it's all Putin's fault. That's what they used to tell us here like two years oh, yeah. ago. But now, I don't even know what they're using now. Because um, uh, they've switched so much. They were saying like transitory inflation. Then there was, it was the Ukraine situation. Then, yeah. I mean, they've said so many things. And now it's going to go back up again. So I don't know what they're uh, going to blame it on now. Uh, pretty soon it's going to be Trump's fault. It's Trump's inflation. Then they're gonna accept it when when sh should no, it happen they're, that they're Trump, not accepting Trump nothing, it. brother. Brother, yeah, they're not even Trump accepting. Gets... They're not even accepting the recession definitions. When we hit the definitions of recession, the two straight oh, they changed uh, quarters. Yeah, yeah, they changed. Yeah. It. I, I remember, in 2020 yeah. they ignored it. 2022 they ignored. Well, 2022 was what you said. 
they were like, oh, well, uh, yeah, we hit it, but it's, yeah, we're going to give the definition now to this group. So when that group says that we're in recession, and I was like, wait, what? So, so I can just pay that group to say that that we're in <laughs> that we're in the best economy ever, and then everyone's like, yay, let's go yeah, spend. That's some, that's some double <laughs> secret probation type of shit there, man. Yeah, That's when it got you weird were for on me. probation, but now you're on double secret probation, <laughs> which is different. Yeah. I knew that the second that they, they did that, I was like, all right, well, now the numbers don't mean shit. Because now we can yeah. look at the numbers. We know that we're in negative quarters, and it don't matter. It's like, oh, yeah, I know that we're yeah, in negative quarters, but let me go call they, that guy. The, the e economy needs us. I just uh, talked with my dad about this the other day. The economy needs us for a few things. That's to buy gas, smoke cigarettes, and drink alcohol because they can tax those. But when it comes to like actually producing anything, it's everything's done in China. They don't need us for anything. They print money to pay for everything else that they need and want. They just need us to consume the taxable goods so that they get a little bit more tax income. But basically, if they could change us for like household pets with a bit more yeah, intelligence, for, for flipping they, a they robot. Would, yeah, they would. They they have no respect for us as as humans in any other way than they think of us like uh, tax cattle. Our time. I don't think is, too highly. Our time is at one thirty. Uh, Diraj, do you want to direct the conversation? I think it's a good time to quit. It's getting close to midnight over here. Yeah, uh, it, it's. Uh, I, I'm at my end's <laughs> wit's end as well. So maybe just end it on a high note while we can. And of Mario. course, we will, we will join uh, Identity Block on his next. Uh, I I think uh, YouTube or uh, sorry uh, the Twitter. Yeah, sorry. Page. Well, if the now that I think about it, if Streamer is still working, because what the issues that Eco was having on his, I was having on mine too. It, it wasn't a. Uh, it was YouTube. Yep, exactly. For some so reason, I'm not YouTube sure. isn't I allowing live programmed it, but I'm not sure. Yeah, so we'll see. If not, I'll just go live on only uh, on not what only fans say? on uh, on Twitch. <laughs> YouTube is not allowing live streams. Is that what you said, or is it? Yes, is it just, correct. That yeah. sounds extremely worrisome to me, man. I, I think some shit might be going down somewhere. Well, YouTube does that at least like once a year. I know that like two or three years ago on um on right before they went on like their Christmas break and supposedly there was not gonna be like nobody in the office, they changed like the whole algo. And they never said what they did, but at some point I'm assuming that they told the system to pretty much block every channel that either had like a referral link or or the word Bitcoin, or the word crypto, or the word, because the channels that were getting banned, they were very well known channels. So I don't know what they I said remember. to them, you know, what they programmed. Adam Stokes, Adam Stokes got banned uh, during that. Yeah, yeah. him, I remember yeah. him. I remember uh, yeah. if it was the one from Christmas, I mean, it was big names. I remember Ivan on Tech. Uh, Rice Crypto, I mean, Crypto Omar. I mean, everyone was freaking out. They're coming up to Crypto Bob. I was like, no, guys, it's just they changed the system, and there's no one in the office to to answer. So, you know, like everyone was just getting that email that just said, hey, your stuff got blocked, and everybody was just freaking out. Hey, I'm answer, I'm I'm messaging, but nobody's answering back. It's like, yeah, they probably won't be back till January first or something, and mm -hmm. uh, but since I haven't seen one of those again. You know, where it was like a massive, like five, 10, 15 channel. I think even Chico Crypto got his stuff banned. And so 
I think it was because of those uh, like referral links, because like anyone that had like referral links and all that stuff, they got their stuff removed. Yeah, but well, anyways, we'll guys, see, thank you so much for having me over. We'll we'll see you where we'll see you. I'm sure it's gonna be a blast. Your SEC episodes have been uh, freaking awesome. That's how awesome. I've been keeping up to date. So thank you for those. Oh, you got it, brother. I'm I I'm like have it where I get a notification either SEC, Treasury, or the Fed, and I'm trying to put all those out because they're boring conversations. And I know that now we're mostly doing the SEC situation because obviously because Richard is going through this, and then once he's done with it, we're probably gonna you know, slow it down on that, but we'll cover the basics or anything that they're putting out there. But uh, I think it's important, especially yesterday, we were seeing all that information that the treasury was putting out. The one that the lady Yellen did, that thing came out like at one or two in the morning. So it wasn't even yesterday, it was the day before. So I'm sure that not many people saw that. And then it's good that we know what's happening. Because the news tell us that, the, the, you know, there's all these events and all this stuff happening with China. But then over here, they're cutting all these deals. And in my opinion, deals that come with China, they're going to come with social credit scores or they're going to come with something that's been happening me, over there in the last three to five let, years. Let me, let me yes, give sir. you a secret with your deals with China, how they've gone. The U.S. has always been the one to pay and China's been the one Bingo. to complain that they haven't gotten enough. China That's has my never thinking. yielded anything to the US. And you know that what they're going to do is like, since it would be like population related, meaning us, like I'm sure the guy would be like, yeah, we don't care. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, eh, that's the worst that could happen. We already sold our yeah. souls like two or three times over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, what's another and one? The, and, and, and the Chinese already have all the uh, all the decoded genes from 23 and me and all the other gene companies where everybody's been sending their their uh, sticks to be tested. So the Chinese already oh, have plus plus, uh, plus when you uh, read the actual papers from the Chinese army, they're they're quite open about using mm -hmm. biological warfare in in uh, new and inventive ways to gain an edge on their enemies. Right. So they're they're not shy about it. And they're not even when they speak amongst themselves. They're really uh, like open and candid about what their what their plan is. But I suppose you have to uh, have a good translator or a, a good AI program to translate those documents to see what they're actually talking about. But we can get into that at another time. It's Let's been great, it. guys. Thank I'm you gonna, so much, guys. I'm going to attack my bacon. Thanks Eat for joining us, ID. Try, fellas. Have, a, have a great time with your bacon. Have you already cooked the bacon? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Enjoy I'm it. already chopping it down. Because I found a new oh, way man. to cook bacon by overlapping how it. How do you do it? So, yep. so I've got I like, it. really? So I've got like a, a, what, like 12 foot long slice of bacon. And then I'll, lay it over itself uh so it'll be three layers high mm -hmm. so just flip once and yeah. everything's perfect the way i do it is i have about half a kilo so that's like a pound of bacon i, I just cut it in half and i put it in a oh, deep nice. cast, a cast iron skillet and i spread them around a bit and i put them in a cold pan and I put the lid on and I put it on full blast. And when it starts sizzling, I'll turn it to medium low and it just renders all the fat out. Not nice. well, most of the fat out. So it's like deep fried bacon. Nice oh crispy. my God. You yeah. don't flip it at all. And the, and the bacon. No, mm. uh, you just stir it. Like yeah, it's like it twice, sinks on the it own fat, the, right? Yeah. It floats in the fat. It's lovely. Have you ever nice. used oh. a uh, a presser? I know that there's things called a bacon press. 
in order to have it evenly wow. touching the pan. Uh, that sounds so racist, man. I would never. I'm just going to let it fry up where it wants to. Uh, let right. bacon be free, I say. I don't want to <laughs> oppress bacon. bacon. Yeah. So I'm looking Bacon's at the... Bacon's already, already getting a bad rap. I'm looking at the it's top... It's super food. Oh, I, I ran into another person last night. Oh, it was at the, um, the Bitcoin virtual meetup. Uh, one of the guys was talking about how he uh, got the swelling out of his foot by going to the carnivore diet. So more and more Absolutely. people are, are talking about diets. I actually had two hexagons this week talking to me about their diet. Guys, if you're into carnivore, I post a lot of studies and stuff in a, in a channel called uh, Hex Carnivore on, on Telegram, t.me slash Hex Carnivore. You're welcome to join. You don't have to be a carnivore to be interested and learn some more information about nutrition and, and the latest studies and stuff. But bacon is full of oleic acid. Oleic acid is the same stuff that is uh, plentiful in olive oil. And for some strange reason, oleic acid in olive oil is good for your heart, but it's supposed to be bad for your heart when it comes from bacon. Uh, and <clears throat> one of those things is a, a, a pure animal product, and the other one is a squeezed uh, seed. So you decide which one is better for you, who are 100% animal fat and animal protein. Yeah, the idea behind carnivore diet is that the animals will eat a variety of things and then we are able to, to eat from them. So we get minerals from the, the actual animal. And then also a lot of these things that have been put into our grocery stores and diets as fillers um, are swelling up our bodies. They're, they're slowing our systems down. Yeah. Um, I'd like to bring everybody... Talk about, Go ahead. Could, could we talk about carnivore more in general, like next week or something? Totally. Might be interesting. Like I've, I've, uh, I've gone through a lot of stuff since we last spoke about it. That was like Christmas time or something. All right. Uh, okay. I, 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 I got them. a lot. I got a lot of stuff to unload. Awesome. And then uh, right now, over on Twitter, I see that Rags to Riches has 920 people in his room live stream talking about the recent SEC uh, suing Uniswap, and then RH Maxi has 480, and he's talking about a variety of things. Nice. So if y'all want to continue to to another that place, is absolutely to awesome. watch anything, that's that's how many people are in each of those rooms. That's amazing. And that's so over one thousand yeah. people on on two separate live streams. Think about it, guys. When when we when we got into this, like Huddle Dog had like thirty guys watching his live stream. All <laughs> right. And and like <clears throat> I remember Hexo's first streams. It was like we we went over one hundred viewers quite quickly, but still it was it was fairly quiet for for, for quite some time. Having a thousand people on a random day like this watching live streams is is a big deal, right? All right, cool guys. Thanks so much for being here. Have a great one, guys. Maybe we'll yeah, see you next you week. Too. Cheers. Let's. Bye. Bye, guys. Later.